Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks and I am a deacon here. Good morning, my name is Lori Fuller. I'm a pastoral intern. Thank you for involving me in your worship service today. Pastor Michelle Lewis, voicing, interpreting today, but will not be joining us in face form in worship. Good morning. Welcome to Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. Today is April 11th. It is the second Sunday of Easter. In our church year, we celebrate Easter for seven weeks. Throughout Easter, we will continue to proclaim, yes, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. So if you have some confetti from your torn up paper chains, After each Alleluia, throw some confetti in the air. Deacon Dorothy is saying, Jesus breaks the chains of death. This means death is not the end of the story. No. Today's Bible story happens on the same day as the women went to the tomb to take care of Jesus. Maybe you'll notice it is really hard to believe that death is not the end of the story but Jesus is risen. And so the story of life continues. And then disciples begin to notice that more and more. So we hope that worship here at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church helps you to experience Easter in a new way. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Let our praises ring. Alleluia. Let us offer our confession in the name of God, the creator, Jesus Christ, the savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Intern Lori is saying, God, we confess that we have sinned in our words, in our actions, and in our thoughts. We have sinned against you and against one another. Please join in, please forgive us. We may try to hide from you, God, 
but you know everything about us. Together we say, please forgive us. God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us and renew your spirit within us. Teach us to walk with you. Let the glory of your holy name shine from our lives. And together we say, amen. God is rich in mercy. God loved us even when we were dead in sin. And God made us alive together with Christ. By God's grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, strengthen and encourage you. Through faith, Christ lives in your hearts. Together we say amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always, together also with you. prayer of the day. Oh God, your son makes himself known to all people through the breaking of bread. Open our eyes and our hearts so that we will know Jesus more closely. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. gospel lesson for today talks about how Jesus shows up with two, to two disciples and the disciples do not recognize Jesus. We have to wonder why. Did they decide before or assume before that they knew who this person was? Let us read through the gospel and see what happens. The gospel of Luke chapter 24 verses 13 through 35. The same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus. It's about seven miles from Jerusalem. The disciples were talking to each other about everything that happened. And while they were discussing these things, Jesus arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing Jesus. Jesus said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, are you the only one? visiting Jerusalem, who is unaware of the things that have taken place over the last few days. Jesus said, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of the powerful deeds and words, Jesus was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped Jesus was the one who would redeem Israel. 
all these things happened three days ago. But there's more. Some of the women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and they did not find the body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them Jesus is alive. Some of those, some who were with us went to the tomb and found things just like the women said. But they did not see Jesus' body. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, you foolish people! Your dull minds keep you from believing all the things the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then Jesus interpreted for them the things written about the Christ in the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. Now, when they came to Emmaus, Jesus was going on ahead. But the disciples urged him to say, saying, stay with us. It is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. After taking a seat at the table with them, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized Jesus. And then Jesus disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Weren't our hearts on fire as we spoke on the road and Jesus explained the scriptures for us? They got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. And they were saying to each other, The Lord has really risen. He has appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. This is word of God. Please join in word of life. Amen. Today's sermon will be a little different than typical. First, good morning to all of you. I'm so happy to join you today. The gospel that we will talk about today has a very special meaning for our very own Pastor Michelle Lewis. How? Because this text was used at Pastor Michelle's ordination that was done at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. The same gospel lesson. It is hard to believe, though, that women, only 50 years ago, women were allowed to be ordained in the ELCA to be ordained as pastors, that is. Wow, it, that wasn't that long ago. And thinking about the gospel, we often assume gender roles and that there were so many men interpreting the Bibles, but we're encouraged to imagine, reimagine a different way to put on some new glasses and think about how more and more people show up in these gospel stories. Women, people of color being teachers, formerly outcast people revealing God's grace. Today's story begins with two of Jesus' followers on the road between Jerusalem and Emmaus. The one 
is named Cleopas. The other is not named, but we assume it's always, I'll have assumed for a long time it's a man. But what if that other disciple is Cleopas's wife? Just imagine a different way of reading this story. I want to show you some pictures from Steve Thomason. He's an artist and he has reimagined this story. Pastor Michelle has used some of Steve's work at Bread of Life in the past. Pastor Steve is a hearing pastor and he is very visual and he is very blessed. So he has made a lot of pictures for today's gospel lesson. Do you notice this third person is drawn as a woman and Jesus is in the middle. I think it's so interesting to imagine the story going forward, including this woman as a disciple. Jesus is asking, what are you talking about? The second disciple says, are you the only one who doesn't know what happened? They crucified Jesus. We had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. And now they tell us his tomb is empty. Jesus responds, what are you, why are you so slow to believe? Isn't this what was taught? Isn't this what the scriptures has taught since the beginning? Did you forget? Let me remind you. I'm going to tell you about Moses and the prophets. Remember? Look back to see what the scriptures have to say. This makes me think we can be so limited. We tend to rely on what we know and what we have experienced. And we limit what we think can happen, what we believe can happen. You see these two disciples. They've decided and assume what has happened. They base their assumptions on their experience. This the only way they can explain what has happened. But their assumptions are based only on their own experience.
and they misunderstand who they're talking to. They think they already know what is going on and they assume that this risen Jesus is clueless and that Jesus's cluelessness makes him a stranger, an outsider, one who does not belong. So this really makes me think about how what we talk about really matters. What we pay attention to grows inside of us. The stories we tell and the way that we tell them tends to confirm certain beliefs and deny other experiences. How many of us keep telling the same stories in the same way to the same group of people who already agree with us? But this can be dangerous. Because our own biases and our own limitations keep us safe with our own old stories and our ima imaginations are limited. And in fact, maybe we miss the risen Jesus altogether. Not only miss Jesus, but we miss everything that the risen Jesus embodies, hope and new life we miss the promise that suffering and death are not the end of the story. For example, the disciples explain to the risen Jesus that their leader, Jesus, had just died on a cross. Cleopas says, some of the women shocked us by saying that his tomb is empty. Others went and verified their story, but they didn't see him. Cleopas assumes that those who proclaimed that the tomb was empty, they were lying, making up stories because they didn't see Jesus. But the irony is this. Cleopas cannot see that he is describing his dashed hopes to the very one in whom those hopes are fulfilled. The risen Jesus asks his companions twice what they are talking about, even though Jesus already knows. How does Jesus know? Because Jesus is the expert. Jesus experienced it. What these disciples really need to do is listen to the risen Jesus as Jesus tells the story. Instead, they go on and on discussing someone else's suffering. They assume they already understand. And the two disciples miss the truth. The risen Jesus is right there with them. So today's gospel lesson reminds us that we must take care with what we are discussing and how we are discussing events. What words do we use? Are we making assumptions? What if we shift to believe that other people are experts about their own experiences? Perhaps we should follow this Emmaus Road example. Instead of assuming our own knowledge and experience is complete, maybe we can ask questions take a deep breath 
and really listen to their experiences. So we become open and attentive to their messages. Be curious, ask questions. Now, I would like to continue to show what Pastor Steve has drawn. The sun is starting to go down. And so they invite Jesus, come, come in and eat with us. So they go and sit at the table. They're sitting and you see Jesus has broken the bread and is offering it to them. The two disciples finally recognize Jesus. And then Jesus is gone. story who gives me chills because often we assume so much and Jesus's way is so different this lesson invites us to pay attention to the others that God brings into our midst and to do so with an open mind and open heart Today's gospel reminds us the risks of assuming that we know. We want to thank Pastor Michelle for her open mind and open heart to see Jesus and to share Jesus with us. So now the question really is, how might we have open minds and open hearts so we don't miss Jesus? We don't want to miss Jesus. And then, how might we share Jesus with others? Amen. Let's continue worship with prayers of the people. Lord Jesus Christ, you conquered death. You rose from the dead and are alive forevermore. Help us remember and experience your loving presence with us. Help us to remember you are with us. Whenever we feel confused and overwhelmed, you are here to guide us and direct us. Whenever we feel sorrow, you are here to comfort us and counsel us. Whenever we feel tempted, you are here to strengthen us and inspire us. When we feel lonely, you are here to encourage and befriend us. Whenever we or our loved ones encounter death that is not the end of the story you bring all of us to glory on the other side of life help us remember and live so that the hope of resurrection will show through our lives 
everyone say together, amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Everyone together and also with you. Deacon Dorothy says, please share peace from God with others. Dorothy and Lori are sharing God's peace. We have an invitation to give your offering. We now celebrate Easter, this amazing promise that death is not the end of the story. Here at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church, God calls us to share this hope and promise with the deaf community and their loved ones. Hope and promise God loves you. So here at Bread of Life, we ask you to give generously. Please send a check to Bread of Life we do check the mailbox multiple times a week. Or you can give online through our website at www.breadoflifedeaf.org. Thank you. Let us pray. God, you come to us and now receive these gifts and our lives offered to you. Together, let's say, our, we lift our hearts to you as you lifted Jesus up from the grave. Through Jesus, bring everything from bondage to freedom, from death to life. Amen. We invite you to sign the Lord's Prayer with us. This will not be voiced. Receive the blessing. Darkness has become light. Sorrow has given way to joy and to hope. As you have been transformed by the power of the cross, Go forth into the world and share the good news. God loves you. We go in the name of the Creator and of the Savior and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Christ 
is risen. Everyone together, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Throw some confetti. You are Christ's body. Christ raised up for the world. So go in peace. Share God's good news. God loves you. And you and you and you and you and everyone. And so together, let us say, thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. And throw some more confetti. Amen.